What actually happens to a bass population when you change the length limits three times over 28 years? The answer surprised even the researchers. Let's break down what they found and what it means for your home lake. So I found this research really interesting. This was on a really popular lake in Mississippi. Over 28 years, they had a slot limit, a 15 inch limit, and a 12 inch limit on bass. They did each one for a long time and they studied what happened to the population, to the size, to the growth. And I think this applies to our own lakes. At the end, the researchers drew some conclusions and some I think are valid, some I might question. And let's take a look at this, see what happened on Ross Barnett and how this kind of pertains to our lakes. So Ross Barnett is a 33,000 acre lake in Jackson, Mississippi. It's one of the most popular lakes there. I've actually fished some tournaments there. It opened in 62. In 65, it was full. And when it started out, there was no length limit up till about 1988. It was just a seven fish bag limit. So from 1988 up to 1997, they put in a slot limit from 13 to 16 inches. So basically fish in that size, those adult fish, you can't keep any of those. Fish over 16 or under 13, you're able to keep. Then in 1998 until 2008, they switched to a 15 inch minimum size limit, which means you can keep fish over 15 inches. Now from 2009 up to the end of the study in 2015, they changed the length limit to 12 inches, meaning you could keep fish over 12 inches. So as you can see, this is a pretty long time with each of these limits, 11 years of a slot limit, 10 years of a 15 inch limit, and another seven years of a 12 inch limit. And like I said, the bag limit during all these limits was seven fish total. So in 2017, they published a peer reviewed study this was done by the U.S. Geological Survey, Mississippi State University, and also the Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fisheries, and Parks. So to look at the bass in the lake, they did two different things. One, they did electrofishing, and secondly, they did angler catch surveys. Now, the electrofishing was pretty extensive. They did it since 1989, so there's 28 years of data there. They did 848 different samplings. They electrofished over 19,000 bass. So they did this every year in the fall. Now each of the fish that they shocked up, they measured them and weighed them, and then they broke the fish into uh, size categories. So they classified them as under eight inches, eight to 12 inches, 12 to 15, then over 15 inches. And then not only length and weight, but they also did a relative condition index. Basically they said, are these fish long and lean? Are they short and fat? You know, how's the build? Basically what we look for as bass fishermen, you want the chunky ones, not versus the really skinny ones. So the lector fishing is pretty consistent year after year, same methods. They also did creel surveys, which is basically asking anglers how many how long did you fish? How many did you catch? How big? Stuff like that. So they did those on the lake uh, in the early part of the survey. In the second half, they were at the boat ramps and asked anglers, but they collected that data as well. So let's get into the results. What you see here, I'll put up a chart, and this one shows the catch and release rate. And on all these charts, it's going to have the gray area on the left there. That's the slot limit at the beginning. Remember, before that, there was no bag limit. They had 11 years of the slot from 13 to 16. That middle, that white section, that's the 15-inch uh, minimum length limit. And then the far right, that gray, that's the 12-inch minimum length limit. So this first chart here, this is the catch and release rate. How many fish were voluntarily released even though you could legally catch them? Before they put in the limit, it was pretty low. So, you know, pre-88, you're talking 43% uh, release rate. Once they put in the slot limit, uh, people released 75% of the fish that they were able to keep, but they let them go. Once it went to 15, though, it really went high. 94% uh, were released then, even though you could keep them. And then same with the 12-inch, uh, you know, it stayed at about 92% there on average. Now put those release rates in the back of your head because that's going to play an important role in the study. Obviously, with slot limits, the idea is you're trying to take out fish under the slot. You get rid of the, the small ones, create less competition for the big fish, and you grow bigger fish with it. But release rates definitely impact how length limits impact a fishery. So keep that in the back of your head. So this next chart here, this shows actual catch rates reported by anglers. So when they ask anglers, how many fish did you catch today? Uh, you can see before the slot lim or before the limits went in place, it was at the lowest and it steadily goes up. When the slot limit was put in place, they averaged 0.46 per hour. 
And then it plateaued once the highest spot it got to is with a 15 inch minimum length limit. It actually got up to 0.75 fish per hour. So as the limits took hold, the number of fish caught per hour definitely went up. Now I'm going to put up a series of charts here. They all have, they call them clusters here where they looked at, this is all electrofishing data. So when they shocked up those fish every year and they looked at the growth rates and the size of the fish. Now this first one, cluster one, this shows the average size of fish shocked up that were over 12 inches. So basically they took every fish it was over 12 inches and what's the median size what's the average size of fish that we shocked up over 12 inches so what you see here is as the slot limit and then the length limits took hold the average fish size of fish over 12 inches actually decreased so the decrease in the size of the big fish of the adult fish here they went from 14.9 inches down to a low of 13.8 so basically the adults the average adult size decreased by about an inch Basically, the researchers said here, that's what you'd expect in an overpopulated type population where there's a lot of fish there, the adults grow a little bit slower, so the average adult size is a little bit smaller. So the second cluster here, this shows fish under 8 inches, the number of them. And remember, this was done in the fall, so these are fish that were spawned or born in the spring and it hadn't fully grown to adults by the fall. The number of these definitely dropped off considerably especially when you get to the 15 inch limit in the middle of the chart here, you can see the number of those juvenile or young of the year fish really declined. Now what the researchers speculated here was the fact that those drop down, there's more adults, all of a sudden the adults were probably cannibalizing and eating some of the young of the year. Now the next cluster, these are numbers of fish from eight to 12 inches, kind of those middle size, almost adults second year to maybe third year type fish, those ones really fluctuated year to year. So they speculated it was more on habitat, not necessarily seeing any impact from the length limit on them. Now cluster four, this one is pretty busy. It shows all the, the size categories of the fish, but you notice the, the there's a little bit of variation, but it stays pretty consistent across the entire span. This is, this is the condition index, which again, going back is like, the relative index of how healthy the fish are. Are they chunky and filled out or are they real skinny, railed out, paper thin looking? Across all the different limits, it stayed very similar. So the fish, even though there were more adults, less of those uh, young ones, the condition of the fish, they looked pretty much the same during the entire study. So I'm going to skip around just a little bit, but they also measured the amount of sunfish, which are like bluegill, and then also shad in the lake. And these, you can see on the chart, this increased steadily during the whole period that they measured. And what they did note that phosphorus, which is like a runoff, uh, the suburbs around Jackson, Mississippi really kind of engulfed part of the lake here. So they speculated runoff from a lot of the, the homes and stuff in the area in the development actually helped accelerate the eutrophication or aging of the lake. That runoff, there was high levels of chlorophyll. So basically there was a lot of the bottom of the food chain like algae and plankton and stuff. There was a lot of food source there. The food that the bass ate increased during this study and they speculated that bass had more to eat, that the aging of the reservoir helped put more food in the lake. That's what kept the condition higher. Now that's all a fancy way of basically saying you would expect when the population kind of gets, there's a lot of adults there and there's too many fish in a reservoir that then they get, you know, they're long and skinny. They're kind of stunted. This showed that these fish, actually, they stayed nice and healthy the entire time. Whether it was food source or thinning out of the young of the year, whatever it was, these bass didn't get skinny. So cluster five, this is the numbers that we really care about. These are numbers of fish from 12 to 15 inches, and those big ones we like from 15 inches and bigger. Now you notice before they had any length limit in there, the numbers of these fish, the big fish that we like, were pretty low. Once the slot limit went in place, you definitely see the upward trend, but there is a lag. Obviously it takes a couple years for those fish to get protected, but you definitely see that the number of big fish, as they put all these length limits in, definitely increased. So the big fish increased during the study. Now you also see a bit of a drop off there when they went away from the slot limit down to 15, but it rebounds with the 12 inch limit again. They found that there was the limit, having the slot limit definitely had an impact and significantly increased the number of large fish in the reservoir. So cluster six, this one's pretty busy, but let me kind of break this one down. It showed the average or medium total length of the largest 10% of fish. So what's the average of the, the biggest 10%? And then also fish under 12 inches. What was the 
median total length of them, both of those steadily increased over the study. Then it also measured the percentage of fish that were 12 inches and larger and 15 inches and larger. I think for fishermen, this is a really good news uh, graph right here. The fish 12 inches and bigger, the average size of them, the percentage that were available, the population and stuff. During all these limits in catch and release, remember, went from 43% at the beginning up to 75% in the slot, up to over 90% with the last limits. Look at how the population changed to a lot higher portion of bigger fish. So that's all the data. That's all the results. Now, the conclusions that the researchers made from this study, I think, are a little bit different than what we as fishermen see. But let me dive into these, show you what they concluded first. So this one that kind of drew me to the study originally, and they said that in the abstract, in the very beginning, they just said, basically, we changed these length limits several times, and length limits didn't restructure the bass population, that they expected it to have different effects, and really it didn't have any impact. Their big takeaway on this was that catch and release on the lake in the early 90s really took hold, and also they reported that nationally that was observed as well. Catch and release and bass fishing was really taken off, and because of that, they changed these link limits, but since people were throwing almost everything back, you remember over 90% with the 15 and 12 inch limits, that they basically speculated that, well, since people are throwing everything back, it doesn't matter what the length limit is, we could put a 20 inch one or a four inch one, everybody's throwing everything back, so our limits don't even make any impact. Now they did put the caveat in, if it's a low to medium pressure reservoir, the length limits don't matter. If it's a really highly pressure reservoir, which I would kind of say that this is an urban fishery, it gets a lot of tournaments and stuff there, I would consider this more medium to high pressure, but they basically said, unless a really high pressure reservoir where there's so much pressure and you risk a lot of fish being taken out, that because of catch and release, basically the length limits don't matter much. Now at the same time, I do find it interesting, in 2016, so the year after they stopped collecting the data here, remember the study came out in 2017, guess what, they changed the length limit on this lake from 12 inches, again, up to 14 inches. So even though length limits don't matter, they changed it themselves up to 14 inches, and that's where the length limit stands today. Now, they did note in the study here that, that tournament organizations, that fishermen, everyone who fishes the lake kind of has opinions, and you know in bass fishing nobody agrees on everything, but they did note that no matter what the data says, fishermen, tournament fishermen, all recreational fishermen have strong opinions on length limits and they do always get a lot of pressure from all sides to raise it, lower it, change the bag limit, you know, lighten it. So they're always under pressure to do something different with the length limits no matter where they put them. So that was their findings and kind of recommendations to other states, other agencies saying, eh, with catch and release these days, length limits don't even matter. I think as a fisherman, if we go back to those charts, to me, like I said, we don't want to catch fish under eight inches. Those don't even count. You know, if they catch one, it's a fluke half the time. Uh, we're looking for big fish, 12 inches and bigger. You know, those 14, 15 inches, what we typically call keepers or tournament size fish. Those are the ones we want. And during the entire study, you saw the numbers of those, the size of those, those went up. The length limits in this, the slot limits starting it off, and then the, the size limits, those impacted the fishery. To me, as a, a bass fisherman, I think it had a very positive effect. Now, they pointed out that the size of those big ones, you know, the, that it seemed like the growth rate slowed down, but they also pointed out that people were releasing those fish, so the numbers of those big fish and the top end size of them, those got bigger because those, those fish, they might be growing a tiny bit slower, like a half inch or a quarter inch slower per year, but guess what? They get caught, they get turned back in there, that fish makes it to another year and another year. So even though they're growing a little bit slower, those fish were growing up to be bigger and being those big ones we want to catch. And here's where I found it really interesting. In the press release in 2016, when they took the size limit up from 12 inches up to 14 inches again, the fisheries biologists noted that in their elective fishing, they started seeing reduced numbers of fish from 15 to 20 inches, those great big fish. With, 12, with the 12 inch limit, people were keeping more of those big ones and they're kind of going away. That's why they went back to a 14 inch limit to help protect those bigger fish, grow more big ones. So the big takeaway to me, even though they said length limits don't matter, I would say two things really come through. One, catch and release obviously works. Those fish, even if they grow slower, they're growing up bigger that it definitely had an impact on the system. You can see how throwing those fish back, 
a lot of catch and release, it just makes for more and bigger fish in the system. And even though they said length limits don't really seem to matter, you definitely saw that when they put the slot limit in there, it definitely helped. Now here's another thing where I take issue. The whole point of a slot limit is that 13 to 16 inches, it only works, and we have the same thing like on Lake Fork, that it goes from 16 to 24 inches. The whole premise is you need to catch and take those small fish out of the system so then the remaining big fish can grow faster. They don't have to compete as much. The problem is with catch and release, most people, bass fishermen, we don't keep small fish even though they're below the limit. We just catch and release everything. So it's been kind of showing a number of times that slot limits don't really work in practice all that well because people don't keep them. So what this study shows to me is that bass kind of police it themselves. They, they The researchers said, well, they're the big fish, they slow down, they're overpopulated and stuff. Actually, the big fish, they are cannibalizing the small ones. They're taking small ones out of the system. It seems like they're reducing the amount of competition by eating some of the small ones. And they, they said that the body condition remained the same just because there were more shad and bluegill. But obviously, the bass weren't so offer, overpopulated that they ate all the, the shad and bluegill and stunted all the fish. To me, basically, the fish police their own uh, slot limit where the big fish are taking over their dominant and they're eating out a lot of those smaller 8 inch fish in the system and they're keeping it so there's more big fish and they're staying in good condition it looks like the fish kind of police its own nature left to itself as long as we don't mess with it too much it's doing a pretty good job it looked like and then to say the link limits don't have any impact i would say it definitely does the fact that they changed it themselves took it back up i think reflects that if, a, if it's a 15 inch limit those fish are never brought to a tournament scales up until they're 15 inches uh it also you know some people do keep bass and stuff it helps protect those smaller fish in the system so I wouldn't necessarily say that length limits have no impact. It probably doesn't have as much of an impact with catch and release, but I would say towards definitely with angler attitudes, the ones that are kept for tournaments and stuff, I would still say that length limits based on this directly have an impact on the population. Maybe not in the way they expected, but overall for the fishing, having those length limits in there definitely made for a better looking fishery based on the shocking results that I saw. So that's my take on this study and length limits. Curious what's happened on your lakes, if length limits, if you've seen it actually impact your fishery to a positive or a negative. So if you have, interested to see the comments down below. And if you like the science reviews and study reviews, check out my science playlist. It has more studies like this where I break it down and show what the science says.